So I was pretty amazed by this, that I could set the autopilot to drive when you can't really even see the lines and it's really snowy out. But it did it. It was pretty terrifying. Um, but it did a pretty decent job. If there's someone on the side of me, I, I, was, I turned it off. I only ran it for like a minute, just I was curious. Like that, see somebody passed and he stayed pretty good. But sometimes it just got a little too close to the center for me. But I was just pretty amazed that you could even do this in the first place. Since then, I've watched a dirty Tesla there in a, doing full self driving in the snow, which the same thing he said was you know, it's crazy that it doesn't like change its acceleration or deceleration based on the snow, it just goes all out no matter what. And, you know, it's pretty easy for it to detect the snow. It just keeps asking me here to, to touch the wheel because I'm not, I don't have my hand resting on the wheel. But, yeah, I don't know. It did it. I don't think I'll use it again. But uh, it successfully stayed in the snow. I'd be curious to try it on a turn. So you'll see here, we started with uh, like 194 miles, and then we get back, we're down to 100. 29 miles so we use 65 miles for a 40 mile trip which is like 1.6 times more uh, than the car estimated uh, even the estimation thing is always wrong and that even in good weather I don't understand why they don't up in the range should be what that projected is I mean I gotta get to average it out a little bit so it doesn't bounce as much but their range is just silly when they they have it up there even in good weather but all in all, I mean, it drives great in the snow. I only have the rear-wheel drive version here. And, uh, you know, you can just stomp on it anywhere you go, and you'll feel like a little slip. But it'll just keep going. And you'll just see the little thing saying your tires are slipping. Like I say, you'll feel it, but you'll go straight. You won't really, like... I even try to gun it around turns sometimes when it's slippery to, to slip a little bit, and you'll slip a tiny bit, but it keeps you going real good. Uh, if you turn on the slip start, you'll get the, you'll be able to tweak it a little more and slide into the turns, but you won't stay straight. You know, it'd be more like a normal, normally driving a rear-wheel drive car. But uh, we have the Viking tires on as well. Obviously, if you didn't have good snow tires, it'd probably run just as crappy as any other car with bad tires. But the only thing that really weirded me out for a little bit, if you have it on hold mode. It'll, uh, when you let off the gas, the regenerative braking will catch the rear a little bit and you'll feel like a little, just this little like slide in the back end, but it never like throws you completely off. It just takes a little getting used to for sure. But other than that, I highly recommend it for a, even in snowy areas. The only thing is you have to look at that range. You're not gonna get anywhere near it because of the electric heat and you know just batteries aren't very good in the snow. I have a Prius Prime as well and you have the same issue in the snow. But you gotta get good snow tires. Even on the rear wheel drive though, you know, no problems in the snow. And I live in a place that gets a crazy amount of snow. Uh, we just got 18 inches the other day. And obviously, just like most cars, this one's a little lower. I think it's ground clearance around five inches. You know, once you drive through snow higher than the vehicle you're in, you're probably going to get stuck. But other than that, I don't think you get stuck in this car. So hope you enjoyed. Have fun.